Psalm 76. In Judah, God is known. His name is great in Israel. His abode has been established in Shalem, his dwelling place in Zion. There he broke the flashing arrows, the shield, the sword, and the weapons of war. Glorious are you, more majestic than the mountains full of prey. The stout-hearted were stripped of their spoil. They sank into sleep. All the men of war were unable to use their hands. At your rebuke, O God of Jacob, both rider and horse lay stunned. But you are to be feared. Who can stand before you when once your anger is roused? From the heavens you utter judgment. The earth feared and was still when God arose to establish judgment to save all the humble of the earth. Surely the wrath of man shall praise you. The remnant of wrath you will put on like a belt. Make your vows to the Lord your God and perform them. Let all around him bring gifts to him who is to be feared, who cuts off the spirit of princes, who is to be feared by the kings of the earth. Hello, Trinity Grace Church family and to any friends uh, of Trinity Grace that are watching. Uh, I want to just ask, how are you? It's about week six or seven since we've been social distancing and, and pretty much locked down at home. And how are you doing? I know that increasingly as time passes, our resources for sanity and just coping with this pandemic in terms of inner peace and soundness of thinking and so forth, they uh, continually get tested. How long can we keep a positive attitude? How long will our savings last for those of us who have lost jobs or are financially struggling because of this pandemic? Um, even as we are in lockdown and we are stuck uh, and, and all the more having to relate to people more than we uh, have been used to, uh, how are those relationships faring as they're being tested with these close quarters? And if you are alone, uh, how are you doing with this uh, amplified state of being alone. Well, we want to continue to find peace in the Psalms during this pandemic. And today I want to point us to Psalm 76. The Psalms again are so beautiful because they are dependable examples of how to talk to God, how to pray to God. And uh, therefore they're also very dependable examples of just how to be truly human as we cry out to God. In Psalm 76, we see a beautiful picture of God's peace, and it comes from God's providence. Perhaps you've never heard that word before, providence, and it's not a word that we find in the Bible explicitly, but certainly through church history, um, thinkers have put together all the puzzle pieces of, of how God acts in the world, and uh, they refer to how he relates to creation to the world with the word providence. And I hope that after this meditation on Psalm 76 that you would want to pray with me, Lord, help me to find peace in your providence. And so straight off the bat, where, where do we see God's peace in Psalm 76? We see a very beautiful picture of God's peace in Psalm 76, and we see it in the first three verses. In Judah, God is known his name is great in Israel. His abode has been established in Shalem. I'm saying it that way because that's how it would be pronounced in the Hebrew. His dwelling place in Zion. There he broke the flashing arrows, the shield, the sword, and the weapons of war. And so I want you to see here in verse 2 that God's ultimate goal is to establish this city called Shalem. And we know that this is a, a short form for Yerushalem, Jerusalem, which literally means city of peace. Now, if you read the whole Bible and you fast forward to the end in Revelation 21, you'll know that God is ultimately looking to establish a new Jeru, uh, Yerushalem, a new city of peace, an ultimate, final, eternal city of peace in which will dwell all those who have placed faith in in Jesus Christ. And I want you to notice 
a characteristic of this new city of peace. In verse 3, there he broke, and then the psalmist goes on to list all these weapons of war, these military weapons and military strength. And God brings that much peace to the entire universe, to the world, in creating a city, a new creation, a new earth for which, uh, in which his uh, followers, his believers, uh, will dwell forever. Now, I hope that uh, you'll want that. And in this time of pandemic, that is meant to be a great peace for us, a great hope that God ultimately is going to work everything, good and bad, pandemic or times of prosperity, that he will work everything in history towards that ultimate state of peace. And so we need to think about what is God's providence, because that, that's what uh, that word is getting to, that God is working everything uh, for his peace and working uh, using everything good and bad toward that purpose. And so what do we mean by God's providence? Just to look to a quick definition, I love how Louis Burkhoff defines it in his systematic theology. And he says, providence, God's providence is that continued exercise of the divine energy whereby the creator God preserves all his creatures, is operative in all that comes to pass in the world, and that Creator God directs all things to their appointed end. To put it differently, God preserves His creation. He is involved in His creation, in history, and God governs His creation and history towards His ultimate goal, towards this new city of peace. And that's a comfort for you and me because what that means is if we have a robust belief and theology of God's providence, then even times of pandemic are for God's good purposes. Now notice here uh, in verse 5 and 6, just the descriptions of how God providentially uh, is involved in history. The stout-hearted were stripped of their spoil. The men of war were unable to use their hands. At your rebuke, there it is, God's involvement in history. God, by design, strips away the strength of these men and nations. And at your rebuke, O God of Jacob, both rider and horse lay stunned. Let me put it very practically. Look, some of us, we've lost jobs. Some of us, we are, we're all being tested in some way. And what a, a robust faith in God's good providence believes is that even when we lose a job, even when we are struggling emotionally and mentally because of this lockdown, even all these things that God has allowed it on purpose because he has a greater good, especially for his children, those who place faith in Christ, and that he's using all of this somehow We'll see the clear picture when we stand before God and he consummates history and we're welcomed into that final new city of peace, the new Yerushalem. We will see it all and we will praise God and we'll wonder why we didn't trust him more in these difficult times. And so I hope you find peace in that. And we see in verse 7 where we can ultimately find that peace. In verse 7, the psalmist goes on to, to pray, But you, God, you are to be feared. Who can stand before you when once your anger is roused? The psalmist is in tension because he understands that God is providential, but as God brings these things into his life, he's wondering, God, I, I can't, it, it's too much for me. This challenge is too much for me. And so he asked, who can stand before you when once your anger is roused? But there's hope there because we know that the answer, the one person who can stand before God when his anger is roused. And in verse 9, when God arose to establish judgment to save all the humble of the earth, 
we know that the humblest man on earth was Jesus Christ. And he's the one person that can stand before God when his anger is aroused. In fact, he has stood there for you and me, shielding us from God's anger so that we can experience all the goodness of God's providence. So however you are struggling through the pandemic, I hope that you'll find hope and peace in God's purpose to keep guiding you and walking with you towards this final new Yerushalem, his ultimate final new city of peace to which he will carry you to the very end. God bless you.